Hey friends, Daniel Day here, the host of the Daniel Day Podcast. The Daniel Day Podcast is proudly sponsored by Ministry Studies Online. Did you know that there are literally thousands of committed pastors, missions workers, youth leaders, and kid men pastors who have little to no formal training in Bible, theology, or ministry principles and practices? And there are even thousands more who sense the call to ministry but see no way financially or otherwise that this can ever happen for them. MSO is the answer for so many who are looking to dive into their calling without having to dive into debt. Ministry Studies Online is a 30-credit, fully online, college-level ministry training program that features foundational and ministry-specific courses. We've come up with a way that you can learn the heart and soul of ministry way beyond just resources with the flexibility you need with your busy schedule. Accessible, affordable, academically excellent. MinistrystudiesOnline.com Hi, my name is Todd Bishop and I pastor Church Unleashed in Long Island, New York. And I cannot tell you how amazing it was to work with Josh and his team at Refresh LED Displays. The professionalism, the customer care, uh, from the beginning all the way to the end was top notch. It was better than we could have ever anticipated. And I'm so grateful that we found this incredible company that works with churches to make their worship experience better. And I can tell you, it has changed our worship experience. Uh, to see everything take place the way it does on the large LED wall has made our experience so much better as a church. From what we've heard from everybody in our church, they love the LED wall. I love the LED wall. The only thing is, I should have got it bigger. But I'm so glad for Josh and his team at Refresh LED Displays. Highly recommended, and I'm glad we found it. People have told me when they stepped on this campus, and even myself, when I first stepped on this campus, you just feel this presence, you feel this, this acceptance. It's really like a family. Like, we're definitely a big family here at North Point. I, I call it my home, this is my home. That is why I came back to teach students to see their lives change and for them to grow into the potential that God has for them. North Point isn't about just investing knowledge into individuals, but it's about allowing individuals to be transformed in their character, in their service, in their leadership. The chapels are just amazing. You know, you see God really move. You see people's lives change. You see people uh, lay heavy stuff down at the altar. We always get something new and some a new face. Some of the greatest transformation times for me have been in our chapel settings, our prayer chapel. I knew immediately that this was a place that I needed to be. This is a place where everybody's here for a single purpose. Everyone's here because they feel called to do something for God in some type of ministry. Because of that single focus, we can have a campus that creates an environment for spiritual growth, for intensity in worship. Coming into these doors, even as a young leader, I am not leaving the same. There's been so much God has done in me, and I'm just so grateful because North Point has been a place where God has really allowed just so much growth. North Point. North Point. North Point. North Point Bible College.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I am Daniel Day, the host. He is Dr. Jim Bradford. How are you today, Pastor? I'm great, Daniel. So good to be with you. Thank you for uh, having me as a guest today. Well, it really is our honor. Uh, as we get started, would you please open us up with a quick word of prayer? Be happy to. Our Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your presence. Please invite the wisdom of the Lord. We pray that you will speak very specifically to each one of us, somehow shape our conversation. And we invite, Lord, the whole Holy Spirit to guide us now as we talk in Jesus' name. We pray for every person that's watching and listening. Pray, Lord, that they will be encouraged, that you'll speak, that you'll you'll guide them, uh, bring something life-giving to every one of their hearts today, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Today, we are diving into the very important topic of the leader's emotional and spiritual health. And as someone who has been in leadership for decades, whether it's on the national level or the local level, uh, you are uniquely qualified to speak into this very, very important topic. And so as we get started, uh, would you please uh, just simply offer us your personal definition of what it means to be an emotionally healthy leader? Uh, we have, you know, we have various ways of understanding health. I suppose if you look it up in the dictionary, uh, you find words like well-being. But I, I just find that that to me, emotional health has to do with capacity. Spiritual health has to do with capacity just like our physical health has to do with our capacity to function. And so I find the word capacity a very helpful word for me in a practical way. And that's probably what I'm trying to measure in my life. Um, if you look up the word sickness in the dictionary, it's uh, sort of infirmity or disability. But I, I prefer to use the word maybe depletion when it comes to emotional and spiritual health for a believer. We're either in a state of depletion or we're in a state of of, of, of sufficient capacity to meet the various needs uh, and, and, and address the demands that are on our lives. So spiritual, emotional, physical capacity, all these dimensions of health are really important. Some people use the uh, analogy of a tank, you know, and if your physical tank's empty, if your emotional tank's empty, if your spiritual tank's empty, um, you, you're, you're gonna, you're going to shut down. Uh, and I, I've seen pastors shut down spiritually, emotionally, physically, call that burnout, call that um, hitting the wall. You call that just um, the, the kinds of deep darkness you can enter into in your life. If, if there's not reserves, if your tank isn't sufficiently full. In the winter here in Springfield, where it's horrendously cold this week, you know, I always encourage my wife, I try myself, I, I make sure my gas tank's at least half half full. Because should I ever get stranded and it's uh, 10 below zero, you know, you can have a few blankets inside. But if you're out of gas on top of it, uh, you could be in a lot of trouble. Some of us just get out of gas. So I, I prefer to look at health in a more functional way than just well-being, whatever that means. It's, it's, it's how full are my tanks? Is there capacity to meet the demands that, uh, that are on me? With that analogy of having your tank filled, how do you personally go about keeping your emotional, your spiritual, your educational, um, pastoral, whatever have you, you might have four or five different types of tanks you wanna keep full. How do you personally do that? Well, it starts with identity. If you could, uh, if you could, and, and th this is, uh, you know, I'll come to a couple of practical things, but but if you don't get this right, then anything practical you do uh, is just going to frustrate you. Uh, your identity. Imagine two circles. This circle is who who I am. This circle is what I do. Now, to some degree, if you're going to be involved in spiritual leadership and pastoral ministry, to some degree, what you do has to flow out of authentically who you are. Right? There needs to be integrity to this. Um, you you can minister in the anointing of the Holy Spirit because you personally walk with Jesus yourself, you know. And so there's got to be overlap between those two circles, what I do and who I am. 
However, when those two circles overlap completely, then you've lost yourself and you've set yourself up for burnout. And so, and so I find that it's important to overlap those circles, but to some degree in, in terms of who I am, to have somewhat of a life. I mean, what I do is pretty clear. Who I am, that can really get lost. I know a lot of people in pastoral ministry start losing who they are. It gets redefined in terms of what they do. Uh, I, I think vocational ministry is one of the most unhealthy things you could ever do for yourself spiritually because you subtly replace intimacy with Jesus with activity for Jesus and all, mm -hmm. all of those things we often talk about, but they become very real. And it's because those two circles, what, what I do is become synonymous with who I am. Uh, who you are spiritually has to be somewhat self-differentiated from what you do. Who you are emotionally and relationally uh, has to have some kind of identity outside of what you do. However, we really set ourselves up for problems when we ignore the need for margins in our lives. And, and that's, that's the real practical area because then we truly are exhausted. And I know many people live with, self dep with sleep deprivation. Um, some of us are, are so emotionally engaged with giving out to people. Uh, and you know, when I was in my 20s, I thought I'd never run out of energy. It took me till I was 29 to start hitting the wall. So, so when you're in your late teens or early 20s, as many of your listeners are, you can live with them this myth that I can do anything, I'll never run out of energy. And so you don't build heart healthy margins early in your life. So I was telling you my basement flooded because it got below zero here in Springfield. We're not used to that cold of winter. And I found out a pipe leading to the outside of my house is tacked right to the side of the house on the inside, but with no insulation between the pipe and the outside of the house. So sure enough, it, it froze, it burst, and my whole basement living area has been flooded just a couple of days ago. And, and that's the problem. There's no insulation between function and life. And, uh, and, and, and life can just freeze you out. It can exhaust you. And so you need margins there. You need some insulation in your life. Uh, you know, whether that's a day off a week, whether that's, um, especially the one I find pastors really, uh, really ignores the emotional margins in their lives. I mean, you, you just need time. You need to give yourself permission to restore, not just spiritually and physically, but emotionally as well. Uh, my wife, for instance, uh, she, she has so, you know, she's helped me with this and we've tried to identify things in our lives that are emotionally restoring and this is not very spiritual, but for her, she likes decorating. So walking through a decorating store for an hour really kind of restores her emotionally. Uh, she it just kind of helps put a little more gas in her emotional tank. Uh, for me, walking with her, because I love her, walking with her at times through a decorating store for an hour, that that depletes me emotionally. But there's other things that I do that I know may restore me emotionally. And, and, and you can't ignore the emotional part of your life. It's a very real part of your life. And the physical, emotional, spiritual, they're like in engineering, we studied systems and, uh, and, and systems are all interrelated. So you adjust one component and it affects the other components. For instance, I notice, especially with exhaustion, when we don't put margins in our lives, we don't give our time, self time for rest, for emotional renewal, for spirituality outside of ministry to other people. But when you don't have those margins, uh, um, exhaustion can do terrible things for you. It becomes susceptible to the discouragement. You feel like you're pushing against something. And at times I wonder whether demonic powers don't exploit our lack of margins and our exhaustion uh, because our exhaustion does give place to lies and misbelief the kinds of discouragement that then the enemy can exploit. Because then that discouragement turns into self-blame. That self-blame turns into, I'm not good enough. Uh, uh, just just that, that kind of then that very toxic thing. Like, I just need to give up. I'm, I'm hopeless. I've had thoughts like, I can't make a difference. I, you know, but those things usually come when I'm really exhausted. And exhaustion has symptoms similar to spiritual warfare to the point where I wonder if they don't work together. Absolutely. I think that the enemy probably strategically lays traps for us when we're tired, uh, maybe right after a big victory when we're completely physically and emotionally, spiritually depleted, as you've already articulated. 
Um, in your experience as a leader and working with leaders for so many years, what would you say might be two or three traps that the enemy really likes to lay down for leaders and how might they avoid those traps? In your experience, what have you seen the most? Yeah, well, one, one is a, a kind of drivenness we fall prey to. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like a, like a gap, you know, in our lives we have to negotiate. One is, you know, say this line is what we expect, this line's what we experience. Or, you, you know, you might say this line's my vision of how things could be, this is a reality of how things are. That gap, like when you ride the subways in London, Every time the door is open, it'll say, mind the gap. That means, you know, don't trip over the gap between the subway floor and the platform floor. And we got to mind that gap really carefully because that gap between, you know, what we're hoping for and yet what we're experiencing, that gap can very easily get filled with a lot of discouragement, with a lot of frustration. Pastors often get very angry, to be honest. And, and some of it is we're not navigating that, that gap in a good way. And that's where our drivenness kicks in. Well, I'm just going to try harder. I'm just going to, you know, gut it up. And, and, then we, and then we exhaust ourselves. And there's a kind of drivenness that gets us away from our calling and gets us away from doing things for the glory of God. It's that I talk with my staff a lot about why before what. You know, you've got to settle the why question. Is it just, just trying harder and being driven because i got to collapse that gap a little bit? Or, or, or is our drivenness, can our drivenness be sort of crucified and replaced with, with a focus on the activity of God? I have a friend who, uh, her name's Gail Johnson. She wrote an excellent book that's just coming out now. I wrote the forward for it. It's called All There. And uh, it really struck me what she said. She said, I've, I've failed to realize that pushing and shoving and doing all the quote unquote right things does not bring life to your soul ever. Wow. And I just find a lot of pastors just, I mean, we have this self-made spirituality doing everything right. And, 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 and it's just driven us. I got to work harder. And instead we, we have to go to a Jesus spirit centered view of everything we do. Cause that gap can also be filled with, 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 with faith and with Holy spirit anointing and with God given strategies. And, and for that, it's just not just trying, just pushing, pushing, pushing ourselves, just trying to tick, check, check off the box as I read my three chapters for the day from the Bible. And I did my half hour praying and I, I you know, and, and I spent some time with my wife and we just, life becomes this, this whole system of duties and the boxes I check off and we just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And, um, and there's a very different way of living. It, it, it's, it's living out of a spiritual center in which we're paying more attention to what God's doing. We're offloading pressure on him. Um, I'm trying to work through this at this time in my own life and ministry um, to, I still, on the external, I work hard. I'm not lazy. I work hard, but I'm not trying as hard as I used to try inside. We can get into this striving in this of the flesh, this drivenness that keeps pushing us and exhausting us. I, I'm trying just to keep the pressure on God. I'm, I'm not trying as hard internally. I, I used to push at people and just stress and just, and there's, what, what if I just lived the life where, where I, was, uh, I was just obsessed with the glory of God and I'm doing this for God's glory and, and I'm focused not on what I'm doing, but what God's doing. And spiritual disciplines are no longer just duties, but they're doorways into accessing God's strength in God's presence. And you know, this is a reframing of how we view what we do. And if you don't have, if, if you don't have those circles somewhat separated, you know, where you, you actually have a spiritual life apart from, apart from your ministry life, um, where, where, where you mainly, you're living in what God's doing. Um, if you don't yeah. do that, you'll just be driven. You'll put a lot of pressure on yourself. And uh, I do find uh, a lot of pastors tend to, tend to fall down there. How much of that drivenness would you say is connected to our culture? Our culture being what it is in North America, bigger is better, brighter is better, lights, camera, action. 
Is there a connection there, do you think? Yeah. There's also the pressure to not feel successful until you become a celebrity. And it's a, that's awful, toxic pressure. That has nothing to do with the mind of Jesus for us. That has nothing to do with the heart of God. Um, we, we, you know, God uses us because he loves people. You know, this, this, and what I love about the gospel, it gets us over ourselves. And when you're no longer the big issue, you know, we do things for such toxic motivations and they do wear us out. And, and there's that pressure to perform. There's bigger is better. There's, um, there's the celebrity thing. There's, I gotta have so many likes on my social media. Otherwise I'm not keeping up. And, and if you're not getting them, you know, it's always the question when that gap is there, you know, you gotta start paying attention to what happens inside of you. Do you just start pushing harder? Do you just start striving? I mean, you may need to change some things the way you do it, but, um, but, that that ego need to succeed to be bigger to be better you know the spotlight's still on us all the time when we're when we're living that way i i, I think you know I, I would do so many things just to prove something about myself that i'm successful that I'm, you know and the problem with that is that it's still me at the center right rather than god uses me i hope because he loves people, not because of me, because he loves people so much. I mean, my future is aligned. Your future is aligned like a pathway that's aligned with people that Jesus desperately loves. And uh, as the Holy Spirit put it to me once years ago when I was choking over my insecurities, you know, he said, Bradford, I love people so much. I'll even use you if I have to. But it always helps me when I get out of the center of the picture. And, and just offload that pressure onto God. This, this, this isn't for me. This isn't because of me, my calling. This isn't about me. This is about people that Jesus loves in my world. And so I'm going to be available to him. I'm going to let him do this. I'm going to pay attention to what his heart is, what he's doing. Um, I, you know, obedience is important, but you can start taking on all kinds of things God's not asking you to do. And you can go the other way and drag your feet too. But most of us tend in our drivenness to just do more than even God's asking us to do. We forget margins, we get exhausted, we're not happy campers, we become spiritually defeated, and we become vulnerable to the enemy then. And then that sets us up, as you were alluding to earlier, to temptation, you know, and that that need in our life then to cope with some things in life by having a secret room of morally wrong activities that we're keeping hidden from everybody else that's close to us in our lives. And that's how we self-medicate. Um, our frustration with that gap and it, it just sets you up you know there's nothing like intimacy with jesus there's nothing like walking in the fellowship of the holy spirit there's nothing like offloading this onto god and and and, and understanding you work hard and you stay obedient to what god's asking you to do but it's very possible to go beyond that start in paul's words striving in the flesh yeah and really depleting yourself what would you do if you had the power to make every leader listening stop doing something immediately, mm -hmm. if you had the power to just wave your hand and say, I, I'm going to make leaders stop doing this right now, what would you want them to stop today? Um, it, it would be to uh, stop living reactively to mm -hmm. things. Um, this uh, this will take away your margins. This will make you lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing. It's very interesting. I mean, all of us have emergencies in our lives, but I, I just see so many of us just exhausting ourselves and becoming unhealthy because we're not living with intentionality. All we're doing for most hours and most days is just reacting to things as they come up you'll find that very unsatisfying after a while it really does wear you out the opposite of that would be living intentionally which to me is beating people to my calendar you know um, the first of the four spiritual laws god loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life i've also found that in ministry i'm surrounded by people who also love me and have a wonderful plan for my life and and if i'm just living reactively i'm living out everybody else's plan for my life uh, people need me more than probably they, they feel they need me more than they do. Uh, um, sometimes as when we get into ministry, we feel like we have to have our hands on everything. We have to be in every meeting and everything. And uh, 
Like for instance, I'm still dealing with this. In the next few days, I'm gonna have two telephone conversations with people who are gonna contact me. I know what they're gonna ask me and I'm gonna to have to say no to them because it's gonna take whole times of chunk, chunks of time and energy from me. And, and, and there's just this thing in me that wants to please people. I don't wanna disappoint people. And so, but what am I doing? I'm just living reactively to the things that are coming at me rather than deciding myself what's most important, getting those most important things in my calendar ahead of time before other people beat me to my calendar. Like if young people get a hold of that now, how much more exponential their effectiveness over the long term might be? It's really an incredible thought, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. And many people look at time management as energy management now. It comes back to what we were talking about with exhaustion. If, you know, if, if that emotional, physical, spiritual capacity is there, then we align our best energies to our most important priorities and relationships once we've defined those and, uh, and, and then manage our time around those. And even, even within a day, put your most important tasks into those times of day when you have your best energies and re re reserve other parts of your day where you have less energy in your physical or emotional tank for less important things. I mean, it just is incredible. It, it's, it's incredible to, to do that. I, I'm working on things a year and two or two out in my calendar right now. I mean, you just got to get the important things on your calendar well in advance. So good. I'd like to wrap up our conversation by just talking about um, growth, personal growth. For example, uh, you are a doctor, okay? Dr. Jim Bradford, you're also a pastor, you're an author. You've done a lot of things to grow personally and in turn because you grew, you were able to help others grow. You teach extensively, you're teaching right now on this Zoom call. Um, education has always been, um, very important to leaders, those who read, lead, as they say. Um, I was just visiting with, uh, I think, our, our mutual friend, uh, Phil Baker. Uh, he yeah. um, was the one who started uh, Ministry Studies Online, which is actually one of the partners of this podcast, one of the supporting po partners of this podcast. And he was talking to me uh, yesterday just about, because I told him that we were going to have this conversation. And he said, First of all, to give you greetings and to thank you for being such a champion for higher education um, and ministry studies and uh, things like ministry studies online and others are really thinking out of the box and how to reach people who can't quite make it to a bricks and mortar school. So there's lots of educational options out there for people. In your opinion, how important is it that we look for opportunities to continue to raise the bar of our own leadership capacity education is one way of doing it um, how important has that been in your own life yeah it's really important sometimes i've found I, I haven't been able to do that in a vacuum it's some it you know we have to own uh, responsibility for the most important relationships in our lives and if they're not sure you know we don't blame others they don't reach out to us we make sure that we have that we have people who stretch us in our lives. And, and that has stimulated a lot of growth, you know, when you've got, when you're around people that are accomplishing a lot, um, what do they say? We tend to be like the five people we spend most time, most of our time with. So um, you take responsibility for putting people in you that, that stretch you, that challenge you, or even give you assignments to do things you've never done before. Um, so, uh, you have to, you have to be stretched by the people around you and then, and then you need to take responsibility for just, you know, reading, growing. Um, one thing I found is that, um, is that asking questions is really important. It's beyond just reading. If you take responsibility for having quality people, maybe in your life who, who have not, who have been where you're not yet. And I think it's a misnomer to look for a mentor who can do everything in every area. But I think we tend to get mentors in specific areas in our lives. And we, not like we spend two hours with them every week. But when we are with people who 
maybe no more than we do or been. I, I find the tendency of most people just to talk about themselves. I don't learn a lot just talking about my, just hearing myself talk. I think the skill, Proverbs 20, verse 5 says, a wise person draws out the heart of another. And I think mm -hmm. just that skill of learning to ask great questions of the people around you. And, and, and uh, you know, that they, they don't even need to be your supervisors. Just, I mean, it's amazing what you can learn from just about anybody. But if you'll, list, if you'll ask questions and listen more than just yourself blabbing on and talking all the time, um, I, I found that a, a, an incredible instrument of growth and then uh i, I take risks um, i'm 68 right now last year in 2020 i did f i i did four things i've never done in my life before because i don't ever want to live safely i i, I want to keep taking risks i want to keep stretching so the people you have around you learning to ask questions where you talk less and listen more and then taking risks intentionally taking risks and not living safely mm -hmm. um, have been the big growth things for me. How important is it as, as leaders that we are constantly filling our time with people who are where we want to be one day? Yeah, that's incredibly important. Um, and that's part of, as we've been saying, is part of what stretches you. Uh, boy, just listening to those people talk about their stories uh, is incredibly helpful to us. And, and the life modeling as well is really important. One thing I, I have noticed, uh, especially coming out of college, your first staff position or two, you're working under a lead pastor. I find a lot of staff people come out of that experience disappointed because sometimes they expect that lead pastor to become a personal mentor to them. Uh, so be careful of your expectations. Um, that might not happen in 60 or 70% of the cases. I mean, you may have a lead pastor who really, who really will clear time just to invest in you, but, um, but don't, don't resent that. That's just probably realistic. It's, it doesn't happen for most first time staff pastors, but, but look to that lead pastor uh, for, you know, you initiate things periodically with them. We can just have co casual conversation. Don't expect them to be going through a mentoring curriculum with you every week. They're not going to be doing that. But still learn to look for what you can learn from them, even if it's not coming in the personal attention way you would like to have it packaged in. But I think just paying attention, just like with our spirituality, uh, we want to be constantly paying attention to what God's doing, not so much what we're doing. But the same when we're around significant people, we're always paying attention to what they're doing. Um, you know, in a staff meeting, how are they responding to a certain issue? Um, how are they handling stress? How, how, how do they approach a passage of scripture and unpack it for people? Uh, you, you're just paying close attention to people and whether they're paying you personal attention or not, you can still learn from people who've been there longer than you have. Absolutely. As we wind up the interview, I'd like to give you the last word and then we're going to wrap up the same way we started with you praying for the listeners um, but what would be the final word of encouragement you might give to those watching on how they might achieve uh, emotional and spiritual health? You know, I'm, it's a wonderful thing to know that we're loved by God. It's incredibly freeing. And, and so do all of this for him. Uh, Brother Lawrence in his book, Practicing the Presence of God, he was a cook in a monastery. He would say, I'd make, and for breakfast, I'd make omelets for the brothers and then after they'd eaten and I cleaned up the kitchen, I'd lie on the cobblestone floor and I would adore God for the sheer privilege of making omelets for him. And, and if we ever lose that center, and, and that kind of captures a number of things we've been saying today. We're, we're doing this for Jesus. The pressure is on him. It's because he loves people. It's not because we're hot shots. Pressure not on us anyway. But let's just, be, let's just let him do this through us and let's keep doing it for his glory. So good. Would you pray for us, please? We thank you, Lord, for the awesome greatness of your love for the people around us and your love for us, that whether we're productive or not for you, my God, there's something of our attention to you, our, our intimacy with you that you love apart from anything we do for you. And may we not lose the center of that. I pray that you'll put people in our lives 
my God, uh, there'll be a few people the devil's going to put in our lives to get us out of the ministry. Help us to be alert to them and careful. But Lord, help us to be looking for those people you put in our lives to keep us in, not only keep us in the game, but, but be stretching us and helping us to grow. Help us to know how to ask good questions. Help us to be listeners more than we're talkers. Help us, help us to be observant. Help us to keep growing. My God, we pray that you'll help us. And I, and I pray, Lord, that we'll not develop early in our lives bad habits, especially in younger years where we don't feel the need for margins in our lives. And so we just push, we, we go, and we don't get enough sleep, and we, we, we just... We, we just live to the edge in everything. I, I just pray you give us wisdom, Lord, to, to, to truly maintain our, our emotional tank and our spiritual tank and our physical tank. I just pray you'll help us to pay attention to those, even when we, when we may not have a felt need to do that. I pray early in our lives we'll build those skills. And I just pray the anointing of your spirit will be upon us. Lord, this is not what we do. It's what you're doing. And we just pray you'll fill us with the spirit. Touch every person that's listening, watching right now. Put them into your hands by faith. Lord Daniel and I just pray for them in Jesus' name that your grace will be upon them. You'll lead them, that they will end. Lord, they'll end this ministry journey years from now in better shape than they started it. We pray and we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer. And thank you, Dr. Bradford, for thank your you, time Daniel. today. Appreciate no, you. Talking to you. Thank you. It means a lot. God bless you. And you as well. Hey guys, Josh Dominguez here, owner of Refresh LED. On behalf of myself and the team, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to check us out. Whether you're a church or your business, and you're thinking about an LED wall, we want to serve you. We understand that this is a big decision with a lot of options to consider. Having been in full-time ministry myself, I fully understand some of the headaches and stresses you may be under when considering an equipment upgrade. Our hope is that your experience with us, whether it's just a quote or installing an LED wall, will truly be refreshing. Our company has a motto of people first. From the consultation phase all the way to installation phase, you'll experience a process unlike any other. Our customer service process is designed with you in mind. So take a moment and fill out the form below. I'd love to hear your vision for your space. As a way to thank you for filling it out, we're going to give you 100 free motion graphics that you can use in your next worship service or event. I hope you enjoy this as a gift to you. Thank you again, and I look forward to working with you and the opportunity to serve you. Hey friends, Daniel Day here, the host of the Daniel Day Podcast. The Daniel Day Podcast is proudly sponsored by Ministry Studies Online. Did you know that there are literally thousands of committed pastors, missions workers, youth leaders, and kid men pastors who have little to no formal training in Bible, theology, or ministry principles and practices? And there are even thousands more who sense the call to ministry but see no way financially or otherwise that this can ever happen for them. MSO is the answer for so many who are looking to dive into their calling without having to dive into debt. Ministry Studies Online is a 30-credit, fully online, college-level ministry training program that features foundational and ministry-specific courses. We've come up with a way that you can learn the heart and soul of ministry way beyond just resources with the flexibility you need with your busy schedule. Accessible, affordable, academically excellent. MinistrystudiesOnline.com People have told me when they stepped on this campus, and even myself, when I first stepped on this campus, you just feel this presence, you feel this, this acceptance. It's really like a family. Like, we're definitely a big family here at North Point. I, I call it my home, this is my home. That is why I came back to teach students to see their lives change and for them to grow into the potential that God has for them. North Point isn't about just investing knowledge into individuals, but it's about allowing individuals to be transformed in their character, in their service, in their leadership. 
the chapels are just amazing. You know, you see God really move. You see people's lives change. You see people uh, lay heavy stuff down at the altar. We always get something new and some a new face. Some of the greatest transformation times for me have been in our chapel settings, our prayer chapel. I knew immediately that this was a place that I needed to be. This is a place where everybody's here for a single purpose. Everyone's here because they feel called to do something for God in some type of ministry. Because of that single focus, we can have a campus that creates an environment for spiritual growth, for intensity in worship. Coming into these doors, even as a young leader, I am not leaving the same. There has been so much God has done in me, and I'm just so grateful because North Point has been a place where God has really allowed just so much growth. North Point. North Point. North Point. North Point Bible College.